Over 25% of neighborhoods in Seattle do not have sidewalks. I don't know about you, but this is a big impact on the way that you live in Seattle. So today I'm gonna break it all down for you. Where are the sidewalks? Where are they not at? Let's take a little adventure on a sidewalk or off a sidewalk through Seattle. Hey there, my name is Brennan Klaus. So today we're gonna talk all about where there are sidewalks and where there are not in Seattle. Now. As a real estate agent, I always knew that there were some neighborhoods without sidewalks. I thought it was kind of a generalized area, but come to find out that there's actually over 25% of Seattle neighborhoods that are sidewalk less. There are literally no sidewalks in them. And this was brought to my attention by Como News. They did this article, sidewalks missing in more than 25% of Seattle neighborhoods. So they went through this basically study and the Seattle Transportation Department basically said to city leaders back in March, earlier in March, that so many neighborhoods lack sidewalks that it would actually take 400 years to have sidewalks on every single street in Seattle. 400 years. That is by and far way too long to have a walkable city or a city that is safe where people can get where they need to go without actually being in a car or being in transit. So according to the Seattle Department of Transportation, 27% of the city's neighborhoods do not currently have sidewalks available for people to walk in. Now stay tuned because we're actually going to go through a map of where there are sidewalks and where there are not. That's going to be towards the end of the video. So you'll wanna stay tuned in so you can see exactly where those locations are. When they went through this study, they basically discovered that the city council needs to make more efforts to actually get more sidewalks in the city. 400 years to fill the 27% of gap in sidewalks is totally unacceptable, one of the council members said. Currently, in the current state of Seattle, sidewalks are required with different types of development projects. So they're mandatory with all new construction, in zones that are currently zoned as urban villages or urban centers. So if a developer is coming in and they're rebuilding that area, those are required. They also have to be installed if six or more housing units are going up in a single area at one time. So you can imagine if you're living in a neighborhood in Seattle right now and you see development happening across the street, for example, six units going in, six townhomes, more than likely they're going to have to put a sidewalk either in front of that lot or on that block. So in areas designated as residential zones, these were formerly like single family homes, properties or homeowners have to install new sidewalks when 10 or more units are being built. And so for urban villages or urban centers or places where there are six or more units, sidewalks are required if they're redeveloped. In residential zones, if 10 or more units are being built, then sidewalks are required. Now, the exception here is area zone for maritime, manufacturing, and logistics. So those are out. Most of the neighborhoods with missing sidewalks are in specific areas. So we're going to actually talk about that map in just a second. So stay tuned for that. So there are some commentary here about this, about how residents actually feel unsafe in the city if they don't have a sidewalk to walk on because they are so much closer to traffic, to the potential of being in an accident with a car specifically. And then there's also commentary about how there are not really core pathways to get where one might be, wanna go or be going in Seattle without missing an area of sidewalk. So how do we make this more inclusive so more people can actually walk along a sidewalk to get to core like urban areas, for example. So the Department of Transportation, they say, considers a variety of factors when deciding where to proactively build new sidewalks. So priority is currently given to areas with a lot of walkers near schools, parks, and transit stops and routes. So you could consider that, for example, if you're thinking about buying a home, you might wanna think about how you could be close to a park or a school or a transit center, and you're more likely to get better sidewalk walkability in those areas or better areas of transportation in those areas because you'll have those factors around you. Other considerations are streets with significant car speeds and equity for neighborhoods that have historically been marginalized. Alternatives that the Department of Transportation is considering aside from traditional sidewalks can cost anywhere between 
$400,000 to $800,000 per block. Painted walkways, they suggest, can be made quickly and much more affordably, but they still cost an average of $1,000 to $200,000 per block. So it is quite expensive, obviously. In history, Seattle has spent about $10 million per year on new sidewalk construction, which is separate from investments that have been made by private developers. So if a developer is redeveloping a lot, that's separate from that $10 million per year. Move Seattle, this is a levy that voters approved, they set a goal of 250 blocks of new sidewalks or walkways over nine years. 239 of those have been completed and the Department of Transportation says 12 more are currently under construction. Sidewalks are essentially essential for safety and the city is responsible for this. So let's take a look at exactly where these sidewalks are not existing. So you have an idea when you're thinking about where you want to be or where you're planning to be, where there are sidewalks and where there are not. Okay, so we're gonna go to Google Earth here. Let's get it down to Seattle specifically. So we are right here in Seattle. So when you think about the Seattle core, I'm gonna zoom in here. Most of these neighborhoods in the core of Seattle are definitely going to have sidewalks. So everything downtown is right here in the center of the screen, everything around Lake Union, Queen Anne, Capitol Hill, all the way up to University of Washington, and then up to Green Lake. Those are all sidewalk areas. Now what happens, I'm gonna get the street numbers on here. What happens is when we get up here to 85th Street, this is essentially where sidewalks have stopped. So everything south of 85th Street. So you can imagine if you're walking along Green Lake, you go up to 85th Street. First of all, 85th is quite a busy street. So right where you're north of Green Lake, in Greenwood, and then just north of Ballard, you're basically in Whittier Heights, Loyal Heights. These areas north of 85th are not going to have sidewalks. There may be some intermixed, but you're really missing a lot of sidewalks as soon as you get up here. So if you are, let's say, in a neighborhood just north of 85th, so if you're at Whitman Middle School, for example, maybe they've prioritized sidewalks because it's near a school, which they said they would, but let's say you're over here on 3rd Avenue Northwest and Northwest 92nd, I'm going to zoom all the way in here. Yeah, you can see there are literally no sidewalks here. So there are crosswalks, you have the crosswalk, and you have the corner here, but there really are no sidewalks here. So up here in Crown Hill, this is a perfect example, no sidewalks. And I've seen this driving through the streets, honestly, like you see all of these homes, but no sidewalks here. Now, if we go down, I'm gonna scroll down a bit, try to stay zoomed in, down 2nd Avenue Northwest, for example, you go past a park here, doesn't look like there are sidewalks still, but we're at 90th, so I probably need to zoom out more. At 90th, still no sidewalks. Let's zoom out a bit more on here, where we can still see this. Going down here, past Fred Meyer, okay, 85th. So we just passed 85th. Okay, so you can see here we see sidewalks now. Sidewalks just south of 85th. On the 84th, there are still sidewalks still sidewalks here. Okay, so this is one area where you may be wanting to think about if you want to live here or what neighborhood you want to be in. If sidewalks are important, this is one thing you should think about, especially in North Seattle, you'll want to think about this because that's 85th. Now, there probably are more sidewalks here. Let's just do a quick glance here. Just north of Ballard, we do have the middle school here, so there might be sidewalks here. Let's look at this. So we're on Densmore, so there are sidewalks here north of 85th in Green Lake. So there are sidewalks here um, north of 85th. It looks like on both sides, I believe, of the street up to 90th at least. Now when we go over to northeast Seattle, let's test this. So we've just crossed I-5, I believe is what we just crossed and we are in Maple Leaf. Okay, yeah, there's a Maple Leaf Park. Now Maple Leaf, this may be a little bit different. They may go a little higher. So we're at 92nd up here. Let's look at this. Okay, so it looks like on 92nd, there's still sidewalks in Maple Leaf. So this is a, a little bit of an anomaly, but 
Maple Leaf, the way the city may have been developed, Maple Leaf may have all been built at once, may have been built when they were still building sidewalks. So let's go all the way up here to, let's say 100. I do not see sidewalks. I see kind of a path on the side of the street, but I don't actually see a sidewalk. A lot of cars parked along the side of the road here, and then we're going to turn down 12th Avenue Northeast. Again, no sidewalks. So Maple Leaf, maybe up to 100th Street, you are safe with sidewalks. Well, don't take that as exact. Really, street by street, and you should look at this because this is important depending on where you want to be and where you want to live. It's important to know if there are going to be sidewalks in front of the house, but this is important also as you're looking at properties and where you want to live, where you decide to rent or own in Seattle, may or may not have sidewalks based on the neighborhood you're in. So we were just in Maple Leaf, and then you'll want to continue over to the areas in Northeast Seattle, like Bryant, Wedgwood, well, Wedgwood we've already passed, like Bryant, a oh, Wedgwood we just got to, Decatur Elementary over here, so there's probably sidewalks near there. But I think 85th is probably the safest bet. Now the other area in Seattle, we're moving south now, so we're moving down past Capitol Hill, Madison Park, Madison Valley, into the Central District. So the Central District all has sidewalks. Judkins Park, for the most part, has sidewalks. Now once you pass I-90 here, so Interstate 90, probably Mount Baker has sidewalks. I know a lot of Beacon Hill has sidewalks, but you start to see sometimes right outside of the city centers or the urban villages that it's referencing in that article, you start to lose the sidewalk. So now we're at South Plum Street and 19th Avenue South. I still see sidewalks at least on one side here. But as we go closer to Rainier Avenue, the sidewalks go away, right? We're getting more into commercial. Now there are some sidewalks here around new development on South Plum Street. Rainier has sidewalks, but it is quite a busy road. Now we'll cross Rainier and we'll go into, really, I guess this is Mount Baker. So there are some sidewalks here as we continue on Plum east of Rainier. And then we're going to pass the Amy Tennis Center and get up into the hills of Mount Baker. Still sidewalks, still sidewalks over here. Now this is also a higher priced neighborhood over here. So we do see some sidewalks. And I'm curious to see as we go south, from here, what do we see here? So as we go a little further south, we're going to go past the intersection of Rainier and Martin Luther King Jr. and into sort of Columbia City territory. So we'll go down here, closer to Columbia City Seward Park. Let's zoom out so you can get a good idea. I see South Alaska, really right by Seward Park, just north of the entrance of Seward Park. So really in this Seward Park, Columbia City area. So now this is close again to an urban center or an urban village because Columbia City does have a quite a bit of activity. We do see sidewalks here. We see some sidewalks. So this is definitely a place where there are sidewalks. Now, some streets do not have that. This is a sidewalk that may have been an alley that I was looking at. But it's important to look at this because if you want to live, let's say Orcas has a sidewalk. Let's say we're going to go down here, 51st place. That seems to have sidewalk. South Bateman does not look like it has sidewalk. South Graham does. We're still kind of in this Columbia City area, so we still do see sidewalks. So let's see where these end. My guess is probably at like Rainier Beach. These probably start ending. So we're at South Holly Street right now. And we're going to move down to Othello. Let's go down just south of Othello. So we're going to look at Fontenelle, South Fontenelle and 48th Avenue South. Okay, still sidewalks here. So we see sidewalks on one side here, at least on both sides. 48th, we'll follow 48th down. Webster, South Webster has sidewalks. So really there are sidewalks down here. So south of I-90 is not completely accurate. It's not as definitive as our 85th Avenue North as that one was. So let's say we get down here. Let's look at one more, one more look and see if we can kind of see where it is. Rainier Beach, let's look at this. South Thistle, South Rose. Yeah, I still see sidewalks here. Okay, 
So we still see some sidewalks. Now we are close to Rainier Ave and MLK Junior Way down here. So that could be a big reason that we still see sidewalks as well. Renton Ave. Okay, now for example, South Director Street, it looks like this does not have sidewalks. So here we're seeing kind of our first South Director and 48th Avenue South. We're seeing no real sidewalks on that one. That's just south of Henderson Street, South Henderson Street. Let's look at South Fletcher, but Fletcher does. So a little bit more variation in South Seattle, a little bit more complexity probably, even more important to look block by block at actually what the sidewalk situation is. And that's all the way down to Rainier Beach. So we really do see sidewalks coming quite a bit a ways down there. Now, if you were to go over here to West Seattle into sort of Del Ridge, High Point, there may be similarly some blocks without sidewalks. I think White Center has some blocks without sidewalks as well. So you really have to look block by block there to see what that sidewalk situation looks like. Okay, now here's a great map by the urbanist that if you wanna look at this, streets north of 85th tend to lack sidewalks, but they're not the only ones in Seattle. So plenty of streets in industrial district, West Seattle, Southeast Seattle, neighborhoods in between are missing sidewalks. So it looks like, yeah, the red lines show where it's unimproved or sidewalks are missing. So this is really a testament to how the city was built and the time that it was built. So areas north of 85th Street, for example, they were largely, areas north of 85th remained under the jurisdiction of King County, which did not have as many regulations on actually putting sidewalks in when they were building. And that was up until 1954. And as you think about the city expanding, that's actually why there were not sidewalks because the city was expanding, but it remained under the jurisdiction of King County. And so sidewalks were not required to be put in. So people did not put them in. Now, the same applies for actually West Seattle. So you can see even in the type of home that's built that West Seattle was developed around the 50s and 60s. And so for that reason, those areas did not require sidewalks because they were still under the jurisdiction of King County. There were not regulations for sidewalks. It is somewhat of a mystery as to why Southeast Seattle does not have as many sidewalks. The urbanist actually predicts that that's because of the topography of Southeast Seattle, where it is much more hilly. It's a little harder to build sidewalks. And so that may be one of the reasons why. Can you believe that it costs $200,000 to $400,000 to develop sidewalks on a single city block? And even painted walkways are $100,000 to $200,000. That is wild to me. And it would take 400 years to actually build sidewalks for the entire city of Seattle, which is only missing 27% of sidewalks in neighborhoods. What are your thoughts about this? Would you live in a neighborhood with sidewalks or without sidewalks? What matters to you? Are you worried about being able to, for example, walk the dog or get to the grocery store? What do you think is important? And what do you think about a neighborhood without sidewalks? I'm Brendan Klaus. Thanks for tuning in. If you don't know anything about me, I left Microsoft years ago to start helping people invest in real estate and build wealth for their future. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you'll subscribe, follow along. If you ever want to get in contact with me, you can book time on my calendar or call me in the links below. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.